This inlay pattern is based on quilt designs. It's for someone very special who happens to do quilting and uh, combining woodworking with wo quilting. I came up with a pattern based off of quilt blocks. It's basically a square with some triangles on the outside and bordered around with framework around the outside edge of that square. And this will repeat several times. It looks like it's going to be a lot of work to begin with, but if you think about the design process and the layout process as thinking of the grain direction that you need it to run and think about it being edge grain, you can figure out the patterns that you need to do to assemble this type of a pattern. You can do almost any quilting pattern because they're all geometric shapes. To lay this pattern out, Everything's going to run vertically because my my inlay is not really an inlay so much as an inset piece of wood that goes all the way through front to back. That means I can't have any pieces of wood that or the entire center block has to run vertical so that all it matches up my vertical pieces on the side um, needs to go the same grain direction. I don't want to put anything crossways if I can help it. Occasionally you'll end up with some at an angle. Um, it's okay to have some going crossways if you're doing an inlay because that's going to get glued down to another surface. It's very thin. It may shrink a little bit. It's pretty skinny so it doesn't have a whole lot of wood movement and contraction. Um, that doesn't become an issue if you're dealing with very small areas of inlay. But because this goes all the way through, I don't want to be gluing end grain to edge grain for the full length of a board. That would make a very weak joint in the board and um, subject the board to breaking off at those joints. So I have to think about this, all of the grain going vertically and go from there. Let's take a look at this pattern that I'm planning on doing. So uh, to how I'm going to construct this is I'm looking at it in bars going across. So I'll do the top bar, the center bar, the bottom bar first. And I could also do these outer bars here, I suppose, but I'm planning on doing these. So for this top bar to begin with, I'm going to do just the dark, light, dark. It'll be a sandwich layer of quarter inch, half inch, and quarter inch. That'll give me sections effectively that I can cut off at each one quarter inch high. So I'll cut out little squares a quarter of an inch high. That'll do the top and the bottom. Of course, that'll give me a filled in square on either end. For the center section, I'm looking at a sandwich of quarter inch for the outside, dark in the middle, half inch, and quarter inch on the outside again to give me this cross section in half inch sections. I'll cut this off straight across half inch sections. Then I'll be taking these two sections that I have, gluing those together into squares, cutting out each of the squares, cutting the diagonals off the squares, and then I'll insert another one quarter inch piece of maple with my grain direction still running the same direction. Um, I just need to cut off the 45 degree angle. For the outside parts, that also is going to be quarter inch. So I'll be taking some quarter inch walnut stock. Everything's been milled down so far. Um, the quarter inch walnut stock, matching it up to what should be one inch sections for each of the outside and for this cross piece. This cross piece, I'm going to want to mill some one inch thick stock. So I'm gonna to have to use five quarter stock to bring it down to one inch so that my grain is all going the same direction. And I'll have that thickness of the wood going through. Now there are some other ways to do this since I'm cut, dealing with a small square. I could make a very wide board of all of these layers and then I'll make individual squares and cut them up afterwards. That way I'm doing the angle corners only once. Um, in this case, I'm trying to use up a lot of my scrap stock. So 
that's what I've got left. I'm just using anything that's cutoffs and that kind of thing. But if I have flaws and defects like this, I just won't include those in my glue up. Making this pinwheel pattern is a rather tedious process, but the end result is really quite impressive. Using a brush or a roller speeds up the process of doing the glue up. By cutting sections to the same length and cutting out the flaws, I can ensure all of my parts will be solid when they're glued together. I clamp the work together as I go to keep good pressure between the layers. The heavy blocks on top of the layer sandwich ensures good pressure without using a lot of clamps. After the glue has dried, I plane the sandwiches even on their faces. I'm using a long bevel up jack plane as this will give me a good flat surface for the entire length of the piece. Occasionally, a card scraper can help address difficult grain areas. For the center sections, um, with the thicker, darker piece in the center, I'm going to be squaring off the end. Again, I'll use the same thickness stock as I had planed out for the center because I want that to end up square as my guide for where I set the stop. Same as for the outside, it's just different setting. And it is a good idea to vacuum out the dust chips that end up on the top of the table periodically. Anything that gets in the way um, can throw off your uh, measurement of your angle. When I come to areas like this, I'll simply throw that piece away. Um, that allows me to use a full stick of stock and not have to worry about um, wasting anything because after all, I am a hoarder. First, we'll square it. And then I'll cut off the remainder of the pieces of my stock. That looks great. Using a push stick instead of my fingers as I get close to the end of the stock allows me to safely utilize every part of my glue up. No waste. The straight bars for the dividing sections are cut to equal length that matches the width of the quilt squares. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Time out, time out. Rewind. So way back, nope, further back, before I even started anything, what I should have done is taken my original stock, this is for another piece, and marked the outside edge with a colored piece of chalk all the way the length because that will tell me which side is up and which side goes out on all the pieces. Instead, I found myself having to look at the grain orientation, both in the center one and on the outer pieces, looking at the color, making sure everything matched up. I spent way, way too much time trying to do that. I don't know, maybe it's type A personality, maybe it's OCD, but I'm a perfectionist, so maybe this isn't the best thing, maybe it is a good thing for me to do. Anyway, save yourself some time, put some chalk line on the outside edge of one of the pieces so that you know everything lines up. That chalk, it'll go away easily later. It doesn't make an impression on anything. It'll be fine. Secondly, rather than using sandpaper, use a card scraper. Card scraper is better in two ways. First of all, as you scrape things off, it acts like your fingernail. It's not gonna be rounding over any edges. Secondly, as I was going through, or 
Secondly, as I was going through the pieces, I noticed as I was scraping off on the face of one of the pieces that that edge had a slight ripple to it, something I hadn't noticed when I took it off of the saw. That can happen when you pull the saw, pull the jig back out of the saw. You might get a little bit of a, the blade that vibrates against the piece as it comes backwards. That's not going to fit nice and flat. You're going to have a small gap, and I'll show you what I mean. You can see the little light edge there, and that's where after I took the card scraper across, it took some of that down. I was just trying to clean up those edges. I'm hitting the edge here and the center here and this edge, so it's got a little bit of a warp out, and you can definitely see it um, when I line that up with the edge of the card scraper that that is not straight. So that would leave a gap, pretty bad gap actually. I don't want that piece, just get rid of it. So I'm about ready to do the glue up for this. If I put this together as it is, I would end up with a kind of a, I don't know, I call it kind of like a dice type pattern where I've got just a five square thing. Um, in order to make the actual pattern that I have with the cutoff corners, first I need to take each of these individual blocks, glue them together, and cut these corners off at a diagonal 45 degree angle. And that's what I'll be doing now. I only glue the three sections of the center of each square together. I'm removing the walnut dividing pieces in this process. I set the bandsaw jig at a 45 degree angle to uniformly cut off the corners. I have a stop block set to rest each of the pieces against, ensuring I cut the same amount off each corner. I've taken these blocks to the bandsaw and I've gotten them close to the 45 degree angle, but because the bandsaw blade wobbles a bit, it's such a tiny piece, it's coming in at an angle. There's a lot of deflection with the blade, like you can see on this piece. Um, I'm going to take these to the shooting board. I've got a piece of plywood that's going to help me ensure that the piece is uh, squared up and both on this edge, and it'll help hold it against this back rail as the force of the blade goes that direction. It'll force it both against the plywood and against the back rail. That allows me to get these at a good 45 degree angle. I do have to be careful. I have a little bit of a bump here on the top where it's not quite the same thickness um, for the center pieces as it is for the sides. So I want the flat side to the back. The reason why I took it to the bandsaw was just to get some of that off before I went to taking it to the miter, miter sled, but um, could do it all here. And I'll just continue taking off little shavings until I get um, white showing uh, that I'm at the maximum. And that's in a real good 45 degree angle on that corner. I'm comfortable with that. It did have a little bit of tear out as I was pushing a little bit too far away, but these edges are going to be cut away anyway. I always plane it down once I have everything done. So yeah, it'll work great. I'll just continue around on all of the pieces, ensuring that all of these are at a 45 degree angle. And that's perfect. To make the triangles on the corner outside corners of this pinwheel design, I have a piece of maple that is milled to the same thickness as all of the pieces that I currently have put together. And I need the grain on this to run the same direction as it is on each of these sapili corners. That means this direction. I can't just glue this on this way and then cut it off. So I'm going to be cutting off kind of a trapezoidal piece um, that will be glued in between 
two pieces kind of like like this with only having um, about a little bit better than an eighth of an inch between the two pieces so that I can then take my bandsaw and cut off after I have everything glued in together just straight on through on both sides. So I'll show you how I do that. With the bandsaw sled angle guide set at a 45 degree angle and a stop block set to cut the length of each of these pieces, I simply cut one end off, flip the bar over, and cut the opposite angle. I need a flat end to clamp these pieces firmly in place during the glue up, so I cut a few pieces that are angled on one side and straight on the other. The squared up ends will go against my stop block in the glue up process, followed by one of the quilting squares, then the section in between, and then another quilting square. I just repeat this until I get to the opposite end where the other squared up and angled piece will go in for clamping. I use a call on either side of my blocks to keep everything in a straight parallel line with even clamping pressure. After this glue up is dried, I plane both sides flat and take it to the bandsaw to cut the individual pieces apart through that gap that I've left between the two angled pieces. I still have the surfaces to plane down where I made that bandsaw cut. Here I'm using a depth planing guide and stop to help hold those small pieces while I plane off each rougher edge of the quilting squares. Next I take the squares of walnut that I've planed down and cut off to match the width of each of the quilting squares. Paying close attention to grain orientation, these are glued in place between each of the squares. You'll notice that I have a longer piece of walnut stock for the outside borders. These are glued in place as I go to eliminate yet another step in the glue up process. Again, good clamping pressure is needed to prevent any gaps from happening in your pattern. This is an example of how I have used this pinwheel quilting pattern in a pizza peel. You'll notice that the design goes all the way through the board from front to the back. I'll show you how I made the flying geese pattern that's in the center in another video. I hope you've enjoyed this inlay video. Please feel free to leave your comments and photos of some of your own inlay designs. If you'd like to see more of these videos, give this a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.